In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend. A legend held dearly by the tale of a royal family that tells of a boy. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that had made him a legend. Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey. A secret and personal journey. A journey in search of a beloved and invaluable friend. A friend with whom he parted ways when he finally fulfilled his heroic destiny and took his place among legends. <laughs> you two fairies did great. I wonder if he has anything good on him. Huh? This guy. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. Ooh, ooh, what a pretty ocarina. Hey, school kid, let me touch it. I want to see. You can't, Tail. What would we do if you dropped it and broke it? No way! You can't touch it! Aw, oh, but sis, why can't I try it out too? Welcome to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, or in this case, Let's Replay. Hey guys, Pit Marthor here, and welcome to the replay of the very first LP I ever did, which was a little over a year ago. So yeah, I am finally doing this again, after, you know, clearly telling that the first version was not near as good due to the camera issues, but now that I have them figured out, it's not so bad. Uh, despite the fact of that intro, you do have all the time in the world to run around here. Uh, quick just showing you the controls analog stick that moves you around L will L target that'll put the camera in front of you and you can jump left and right use your sword and backflip with that uh, if you want to use your sword normally you can use B uh, A will make you roll while you're walking or if you're standing still it will put away your sword and shield and I think that's all the controls really for right now I mean there will be stuff later but you know, nothing too big of a deal right now. And I did horribly on that, but it's it doesn't matter. There's a much easier way to get a lot more money later on in the game. And if you want to jump, just run forward. I'm not pressing A after I run forward. Link just automatically jumps. And now we have more cutscenes, so I will be quiet. Oh, and I'm going to try to voice act this entire thing. We're going to see how well that works and if I can actually remember 
Whose voice I used for what? What's with that stupid horse of yours? It doesn't listen to a word that's said to it. There's no point in riding a thing like that, so I did you a favor and got rid of it. Heh <laughs> heh. Aw, boo-hoo. Why the sad face? I just thought I'd have a little fun with you. Oh, come now. Do you really think you can beat me as I am now? Fool! <laughs> now that's a good look for you. You'll stay looking that way here forever. S Sis! Whoa, whoa, Skull Kid, wait for me. I'm still here. Tail, you can't leave without me. You! If I wasn't dealing with you, I wouldn't have gotten separated from my brother. Well, don't just sit there, Deku boy. Do something. Why are you looking at me like that? What, is there something on my face? Will you stop staring and just open that door for me? Please, come on. A helpless little girl's asking you. So hurry up. Tail. I wonder if that child will be alright on his own. So now we are stuck as a Deku currently. You can use A to spin. That is your method of attack right now. I missed one. Do I missed? Oh well. And if you want to open a door like this, you just stand near it and press A to open. And for now, we'll leave the fairy behind forever. Hey, wait for me! Don't leave me behind! Why not? So, um, that's stuff back there. I am um, apologize, so so take me with you. You want to know about that skull kid who just ran off, right? Well, I just so happen to have an idea of where he might be going. Take me with you, and I'll help you out. Deal? Please. Good. So then it's settled. Now then, I'll be your partner, or at least until we catch that skull kid. My name's Tattle, so it's uh, nice to meet you, or whatever. Now that we've gotten all that straightened out, can we stop messing around and get moving? If I figure something out, press up on the C stick, and I'll manage to tell you, or I'll tell you. Hopefully you'll manage to get it by without my help until then. <laughs> uh, I love Tattle. She's funny. Or Tattle. She's probably my favorite quote-unquote partner. You know how you had Navi and Ocarina of Time to reference a later game. Uh, Ciela from uh, Phantom Hourglass. So if you actually use up on the C-Stick to talk to her, she will explain how to use these Deku flowers like the one we saw in the intro. Basically, once you stand near them, you can find an ability called Dive on that blue button right there. And then you can jump. You have to wait until your, uh, I'm assuming that's your mouth, opens. It just looks like your mouth. And once it opens, you'll get a higher jump. If you just jump right whenever you burrow in, like this, you're not going to get a high enough jump. So, make sure you do that correctly. And then, you will either automatically be let down, or you can hit down whenever it shows it, and that will drop you wherever you want. Uh, for the most part, this first video here is going to be all introduction stuff for those of you that haven't played Majora's Mask or whatever. I'll explain why I'm replaying it and stuff about it, you know, more about personal information in this game and my connection with it. And how it was on my channel previously and all that. So you got a Deku Nut. Press B while in the air to drop it and it will make a blinding flash. 
Now, despite the fact that they give you this item, there's actually nothing to do with it right now. I mean, you can use it, but it's not for anything right now. Deku nuts are actually pretty useful, but they're not used for a lot. They are, in certain situations, actually your best method of attack, especially against a few mini-bosses I can think of. That was explaining how to L-target something and talk to it. You just press L, and then once you get the talk ability, you will be able to talk to it. That was a statue, however, so it would have just had dialogue from Tal saying, This statue looks sad. It's so nice to have an over 10 minute time limit, unlike when I first did this game. I stopped, like, in that point where I was flying and got the Deku Nuts. And I can keep going now. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? No, that's, that's Tails' voice. Can't do that. I'll do a really creepy voice, I guess. Because he's a creepy dude. I own the Happy Mask Shop. I travel far and wide in search of masks. During my travels, a very important mask was stolen from me by an imp in the woods. So here I am at a loss. And now I found you. Now don't think me rude, but I have been following you. Oh, that's not rude. That's just plain creepy. For I know of a way to return you to your former self. If you can get back the precious item that was stolen from you, I will return you to normal. In exchange, all I ask is that you also get the precious mask that the imp stole from me. What? Is it not a simple task? Why does someone like you? It should be by no means a difficult task. Except, the one thing is, I'm a very busy fellow, and I must leave this place in three days. How grateful I would be if you could bring it back to me before my time here is up. But yes, you'll be fine. <coughs> I see you're young and have tremendous courage. I'm sure you'll find it right away. Well then, I am counting on you. Alright, so let's get going. The clock doesn't start until you get out here, which is actually kind of funny, because he says he's got to leave in three days, yet since he's down there, the clock never goes forward. But we are in South Clock Town, or South Clock Town. Now, the Clock Town area, this is your... This is the main area of the game, I suppose. You know, this is your home base, sort of. You know, there's no monsters here or anything like that. And yes, I'm skipping this dialogue. This just talks about how you've only got 72 hours total. Uh, I'll explain more about the cycle limit, though. Well, don't just stand there. We're going to go see the Great Fairy. Look, you want to find the Skull Kid, don't you? The Great Fairy will know what he's up to. She watches over everything. And just between you and me, the Skull Kid is no match for the Great Fairy. Go to the shrine near the North Gate. You'll find the Great Fairy in there. But this is kind of your safe spot. This is where you'll start out. As you can see, the map is huge, and you're right here in the center of it. So, yeah. Clock Town may seem huge, but you will get accustomed to it. Don't worry about that. Uh, the Great Fairy is in North Clock Town. Uh, but before we go there, because he said this Gold Kid is no match for the Great Fairy. However, and I kind of went like, Fairy. This is no match for the Great Fairy. But it turns out the Skull Kid actually shattered the Great Fairy, and... Now there's stray fairies. You're only missing that one. It is in the laundry pool in South Clocktown. So once you pick that up, then you should go to North Clocktown. Uh, avoid staying away or stay away from that Deku flower because if you do, it will trigger a cutscene, which we'll be seeing later in this 72-hour uh, cycle. However, uh, we don't want to work with that just yet. Uh, there is something I want to do here, though. This is North Clock Town. Obviously, there's North, South, East, and West. And trust me, you will grow accustomed to it. The first time I played this game, I was like, dang, this place is huge. Uh, if you need some more money, which you will in a second here, there is some more of those moving bushes that drop one rupee each. Uh, what we want to do here is talk to this guy. This name guy's name is Tingle, if you remember my Wind Waker LP, which we just did. Uh, Tingle was in that game. This is his debut, though. He's a lot nicer here, meaning he's not a jerk and makes you pay a lot of money for Triforce charts. Instead, he sells you maps, so you can go ahead and buy one of Clock Town right now. You got a map of Clock Town. And it's only five rupees, so that bush will have at least eight, so if you can get five from it, then there you go, you're, you've got it made. Right, I'm going to have to try to run as fast as I can through this, because I want to get actually a lot of stuff done that you can do. So yes, it will explain the Great Fairy Shatter, but since we already found that one fairy that we needed, Great Fairy is automatically back to normal, so that worked out perfectly. <laughs> I 
And the saving in this game is really weird as well. We'll get into that later, but you can't really just save anywhere you want. So, basically, uh, she will give you magic power, which is a lot earlier than you get it in most games. When Waker, you didn't get it till you got the Deku Leaf. Ocarina of Time, you didn't get it till you got the uh, uh, Din's Fire, I think. Or maybe it was the Great S or the Extended Spin Attack. I think that's actually what it was. It was the Great Fair on top of Death Mountain. I remember that much. But in this case, you get magic extremely early. And what this will let you do is you can hit B, and that will let you shoot a bubble into the air, which actually doesn't seem like it would do much, but it is required to get through the next part of this, so you had to do that. It actually does come in handy in a few situations. Especially while you're stuck as a Deku. Alright, the next thing I want to do really, really quickly is actually go in here. I'm sure people are like, why are you going to here first? There is actually some strategy behind this. Uh, if you this is your first time playing, you probably don't want to try to do this because you're probably going to run out of time to do all the stuff I want to do. This is the Deku Playground. You can pay 10 rupees. And what happens is basically you use the Deku Flowers to get around. You cannot fall off the platforms. Uh, you can come here once each day and play a new game. And once you beat all three, you'll be awarded. Of course, for beating each individual one, you will also be rewarded. Uh, the time to beat is 1.15. What's really strange is on the third day, the time is 1 minute 16. I don't get why they added the extra second, because you will never, I repeat, never cut it that... Let me put it this way. You will never always cut it that close. I know that sounds weird, but it's not like every time you play, you're going to be make it just by one second. I can usually find a good, you know, five minutes. Or not five minutes. A good five seconds at least. To have a good, you know, safe pad to where... I don't lose. It's really hard to lose this, actually, at least the first day. You do get all those rupees, just so you know. And once you get them all, okay, it's all over. New record. And you, in this case, we will get a purple rupee, which is worth 50 rupees. They'll record your name. My name is Delta. That is what I entered in here. Unlike the last time I played this, where I entered it is Violet. I already have a Violet file, and I don't want to get it mixed up like I did the last time we played this. Alright, so, aim a bubble at that uh, balloon right there, and it will pop, and this kid over here, his name is Jim, that was trying to pop the bubble, will say, Are you the one that just popped that up there? Not bad for a Deku Scrub. We bombers have a hideout that leads to the observatory outside town. You need a code to get in. Maybe I'll tell you what it is, but don't think you're going to get it that easily. I can't just tell you what the code is. You'll have to pass my test first. Are you ready? Sure, why not? Alright, line up, guys. If you can find all five of us by tomorrow morning, I'll teach you the code. Are you ready? But we are out of time, so next time on Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, we will find all the kids. Later, guys.